think that they were intertwined with each other. Which I call the content as opposed to the practice of his academic work is one of the primary ingredients in the secondary world of many kinds. Anglo-Saxon above all. And of course the philology. The philology of the primary world relates very, very closely to the languages of the secondary world. Sindarin and Quenya, the languages, the elvish languages of Middle Earth. Uh, they're totally different in the sense in which he meant, used the word fantasy. They, they are the languages of the fantasy. But they're very hard. They're hard-bitten. They have their own severe phonetics, their severe grammatical history. It shows, I think, as important as it shows what the word fantasy means. There's nothing crazy or absurd in the idea. His fantasy philology is just as, just as strict as the philology of the Germanic languages that he practiced as a, that he expanded as a professor. So I think that his academic, the content of his academic uh, life, as I say, intertwined and was productive, very productive, in his sub-creative world. In terms of actual content, of course, an important element in The Lord of the Rings, which plays no other part, no part in The Hobbit, I think, or, no, or in The Silmarillion, but plays a very important part in The Lord of the Rings, is the Kingdom of Rohan, which is modelled on, in a sense, transformed, it's not supposed to be historical because it's in the secondary world, but the inspiration for Rohan derives very evidently from Anglo-Saxon England. And the philology does not derive from uh, any direct imitation of real languages in the world, not at all. But of course it does derive from his mastery of the history of actual languages. That is to say, his knowledge of the history of English, German, so forth, other Germanic languages. Uh, he used this. He used this kind of knowledge, his knowledge of phonetics, of phonetic history, to devise his own languages. That is what gives them their extraordinary credibility because he composed them historically. He started from ancient forms and just as with a real language within the history of Middle Earth he devised the changes of pronunciation that overtook them just as they do in real languages. And therefore, if he wanted a new word within one of these languages, he didn't uh, simply select a few syllables that attracted him. He worked out what that word would actually be. And he works out, as it were, the sound changes that will, it fictionally, will have passed over them in the course of time, as they do in all languages. And this is what gives to these languages their extraordinary, one of the most powerful things in his, in his works, even for those who have no understanding of the nature of the philology, this extraordinary sense that they, they cohere, they are real, they have the trademark of being a totally individual speech. Just as even if you don't know French, you can say, that's French or that's Swedish because they have the characteristic note and quality, and his languages do that.